Thank you, everyone, for joining us despite your busy schedules. We will now like to begin Toyota Motor Corporation's FY 2022 second quarter financial results press briefing. Starting by introducing our presenters today, Chief Financial Officer Kenta Kon. Chief Communication Officer, Jun Nagata. We will now like to begin by having our CFO, Mr. Kon, explain about the financial results. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Kenta Kon. We would like to express our heartfelt appreciation to all of our stakeholders, including customers around the world who chose us, as well as our shareholders, dealers, and suppliers who support us. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused to our customers due to the recent production volume reduction. We are working to recover production as soon as possible. Thank you for your understanding. I would like to provide a summary of the second quarter of this fiscal year. The semiconductor shortage and spread of COVID-19 in some developing countries caused us to reduce our production volume globally, but our suppliers, plants, and dealers made great efforts to supply as many cars to our customers as possible. Our results for the first half of the fiscal year reflect our enhanced cost reduction activities and efforts to make more efficient use of fixed costs, while enhancing the product appeal by making ever better cars and investing for growth. We have also benefited from the tightening supply and high demand in the new car market, as this has led to higher used car prices and allowed us to decrease the quantum of incentives. We believe these factors have made our results in certain respects to be robust beyond our underlying strength. Even though we have revised our operating income forecast upwards, excluding the impact of the depreciation of the yen, it would be in substance a downward revision due to increases in raw material costs. We will keep improving our operation to standardize what we have learned from COVID-19. In terms of our return to shareholders, the interim ordinary dividend is 120 yen per share, an increase of 15 yen compared to the previous fiscal year. We have also decided to conduct a repurchase of up to 100 billion yen of our common stock. Let me discuss our financial results for the first half ended September 2021. Consolidated vehicle sales for the period was at 4,094,000 units, which was 132.7% of consolidated vehicle sales for the first half of the previous fiscal year. Toyota and Lexus brand vehicle sales was at 4,852,000 units, which was 121.0% of such sales for the first half of the previous fiscal year. The ratio of electrified vehicles was 27.7%. Consolidated financial results for the first half of this fiscal year were sales revenues of 15 trillion 481.2 billion yen, operating income of 1 trillion 747.4 billion yen, income before income taxes of 2 trillion 144.0 billion yen, and net income of 1 trillion 524.4 billion yen. I would like to explain the factors which impacted operating income year on year. First, the effects of foreign exchange rates increased operating income by 255 billion yen. Second, cost reduction efforts decreased operating income by 30 billion yen due to the impact of soaring material prices. Third, marketing efforts increased operating income by 1 trillion 55 billion yen, largely due to the increase in sales volume and improved earnings in the financial services business. Finally, a reduction in expenses increased operating income by 10 billion yen. As a result, excluding the overall impact of foreign exchange rates, Swap valuation gains and losses and other factors, operating income increased by 1 trillion 35 billion yen year on year. Next, I will explain operating income for each region. As shown, operating income increased year on year in all regions, largely due to the increase in sales volume. 
As for our China business, the operating income of consolidated subsidiaries and our share of profit of investments accounted for using the equity method increased due to the impact of foreign exchange rates. Regarding financial services, operating income excluding swap valuation gains and losses for the fiscal year increased year on year mainly due to the increase in the lending balance and margins. Next, I would like to explain our return to shareholders. Based on the business results for the first half of this fiscal year, we decided to pay an interim dividend of 120 yen per share, an increase of 15 yen compared to the previous fiscal year. We intend to continue to maintain and improve the consolidated dividend payout ratio over the mid to long term, as well as pay dividends stably and sustainably to reward our shareholders who hold our shares over the mid to long term. In addition, we will repurchase up to 150 billion yen of our own shares for the current interim period, taking into consideration factors such as investment in growth areas and dividend levels. Next, I will explain the forecast for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2022. Consolidated vehicle sales is expected to be 8.55 million units, which was 98.3 percent of the previous forecast. Regional sales breakdown is as stated in the presentation. As for Toyota and Lexus brand vehicle sales, we anticipate that vehicle sales will be 9.4 million units, which is 97.9 percent of the previous forecast. Next, let me explain the forecast for the four-year consolidated financial performance. We have adopted forex rate assumptions for October onwards of 110 yen per dollar and 125 yen per euro, which makes the four-year assumptions of 110 yen per dollar and 128 per euro. Based on this, our forecast for four-year consolidated financial performance are sales revenues of 30 trillion yen, operating income of 2 trillion yen, 800 billion yen, income before income taxes of 3 trillion yen, 440 billion yen, and net income of 2 trillion, 490 billion yen. Next, I would like to explain the factors that impact operating income year-on-year year compared to the previous forecast. The operating income forecast has been revised upward by 300 billion yen from the previous forecast, taking into account the increase in operating income due to the revision of FX assumptions, reflecting the weaker yen and the decrease in operating income due to the increase in raw material costs. The factors that will impact operating income compared to the same period of previous fiscal year are as shown in the presentation. Although we continue to face unpredictable conditions with regards to the stabilization of supply, as well as issues such as the sharp rise in raw material costs, we will continue to work towards the future and establish the lessons learned from the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you for your attention. We will now like to begin the Q&A session. If you have any questions, please press the raise hand button on your screen. When your name is called, then unmute your microphone and camera and begin with your question. Please allow us to limit you to two questions per person. Thank you for your cooperation. Mr. Katori from Yomiuri Newspapers, please. We will now be switching the screen, and when you see yourself on the screen, please start with your question. And the screen of the questioner will only be seen uh, shown to the presenters at TMC. Thank you for your understanding. We are now switching the screen. And Mr. Katori, can you begin with your question? This is Katori speaking from Yomiuri Newspapers. I have two questions. First, for this ended first half performance, I'd like to hear your assessment and summary, especially the operating income. Maybe there has been some changes, but I do think that it's the record high uh, from the past history. So for the factors that contributed to that, and also for the uh, large vehicle size performing very well, the sales uh, very well for new car sales. Uh, I'd like to hear about the factors that contributed, and especially I'd like to ask about the production uh, recovery plan. I think you've made a, a report about what your plans up to November, but up to December, are you, I think you hear that you will be operating on the weekends as well, including Saturdays, but still there is some impact from COVID. So what kind of recovery plan uh, do you have? That's my second question. Thank you, Mr. Katori, for your question. So your first question was 
about the assessment of the ended first half of this term, uh, about what were the contributing factors. And your second question was about the production recovery plan after December. That is how I understood two questions. Am I correct? Yes. So both of those questions will be responded from our CFO, Mr. Kohn. Thank you very much for your question. Regarding the first half, second quarter uh, results, the assessments, if we can look at the third page of the presentation material. Thank you. This is the summary. And I'd like to make some additional comments on this, uh, in addition to this page. So as you can see on the very top, globally, production volume has uh, declined, declined globally. That is uh, how we see the first half of this fiscal year. But in this situation, our dealers, our suppliers, our plants, the plants worldwide, uh, also the Gemba or the uh, operation sites, they have made great efforts to supply as much cars as possible to the customers without stopping the vehicle plants. If a vehicle plant stops, there will be a huge impact to our suppliers and stakeholders. Therefore, the people working at the operation site has wanted to avoid that situation and made strong efforts, and that has contributed largely to our results. But uh, on the other hand, we are, in fact, uh, having customers wait for the car delivery, so there are many challenges still that we have to uh, work on. Uh, and also, for the sales results, even though though there was limitations in production, it, the sales side did not drop so significantly compared year on year. Actually, there was an increase. And this is because the dealers, they have worked, made efforts to drop the level of inventory, also made efficient sales activities, uh, also being able to work flexibly with the existing inventories. So they have uh, been uh, working hard to capture the sales opportunities, have good communication with the customers to deliver the cars as much as possible. This was also a huge contributor to the results. And on the other hand, there were some areas that went beyond our underlying strength. And it might be just part, partially, but the new car sales is uh, tight in supply, and therefore used car prices have at, are now at a high level. And as a result, the financial businesses, the residual value uh, balance has turned positively. And this is uh, mainly a contributed by the high used car price market. And regarding incentives, with, under the current situation, for all of the OEMs, it's the same situation, but we have been able to keep the incentives low. So these kinds of environmental aspects have uh, contributed. Uh, this will be beyond our underlying strength. However, for the market fluctuation, the higher commodity price, price market uh, high commodity prices is uh, also a large impacting factor. Uh, we are not in a situation where we can hand on these price increases to our customers. Therefore, cost reduction, fixed cost reduction, also uh, making efforts to enhance the vehicle value. These were the efforts efforts made to recover the negative impact from the market fluctuation. For the cost reduction and fixed cost reduction, we, there has been huge efforts made company-wide, and this effort is continuing. Going through COVID, we have, don't have a feel at the point of this time that we are returning back to the uh, before COVID uh, times. So that will be a positive feeling that I have. I'm sorry to be a lengthy, giving you a lengthy answer, but one of the reasons why we did not drop, see a big drop in the sales, uh, the sales activities is because the uh, product appeal being enhanced as a foundation of our business. I think that is a large contributor having a stronger product appeal. TNGA uh, was a uh, led product started from the uh, initiation uh, from the uh, President Toyota's uh, statements uh, and those initiatives were taken, product appeal, strength, and uh, also to set the products in a, a group or series and in families and uh, to uh, achieve ever better cars. And this kind of uh, activity had contributed in this result, I believe. And for your second question about the production recovery, after December, we do still see much risks uh, there. However, 
for the production volume, the 9 million that we have announced today for December and January, February, March, if we operate in a full of operation, we still see some risk in order to be able to operate fully. Therefore, it is slightly conservative, this 9 million in volume. But based on our uh, running produ uh, production uh, situation, including the Saturday operations, uh, since we have customers waiting as a fact, we will do whatever we can to continue the production. So this will be my answers. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Katori, for your question. We would like to move to the next question. Mr. Kondo from Asahi Newspaper, please. We are going to switch over the screen. So please start your question when you see yourself on the screen. Mr. Kondo, please. My name is Kondo from Asahi Newspaper. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? Okay. Yes, we can. So, based upon your financial results, I have a question. Starting with the sales and operating income and net income, I think it is recording historical high, and you made a revision, upward revision for the full year. Yes, yen depreciation was one factor, but I see wonderful numbers, and still, uh, the society as a whole is suffering from COVID-19, and also, the auto industry, especially the small suppliers, have to deal with carbon neutrality and also face the challenge of case and other new technologies. In other words, they are still struggling to turn around their profit. And I understand your number is based upon those suppliers' numbers. How do you accept this? And what do you think about returning those uh, profit and and also uh, the relations. And also, your relationship with the suppliers, especially with Nippon Steel, the champion negotiation, so-called, is the negotiation on the steel price every half a year. And at Nippon Steel, R&D investments and development costs are being the reasons for the uh, negotiation. So what is your measure, and how are you going to deal with this and what's your thoughts on this? And especially this litigation on this patent and you are expected to make a scientific proof on this and how are you going, to, what is your position on this litigation? Mr. Kondo, thank you so much for your question. This, the first question was about of a good performance on this interim financial results. Well, Number-wise, your question was that our numbers were based upon suppliers' numbers and what is our take on this. Well, Mr. Kong is going to answer on this. And with regards to the relations with Nippon Steel, and the first question was on the price negotiation, Nippon Steel is uh, asking for a further price hike, and what is our opinion on this? And the second is about this electromagnetic steel, uh, what we think about this. And Nagata, myself, will answer this, this question later. Yes, regarding the first question, I would like to answer. First of all, with regards to the relations with suppliers, well, we would like to uh, coexist or with our suppliers so that uh, we can uh, reduce cost and enhance the competitiveness together. We would like to enhance competitiveness of suppliers and we would like to reap the, re the achievements fairly together. And this would also include our customers. We have not changed this philosophy all along. For example, Yes, we do receive uh, comments like the one we just received from time to time. And as I've been involved in the conversation and dialogue with suppliers, 
For example, we made announcements of reducing our production volume a couple of times, and orders from Toyota has a very high certainty. And on top of that, when there is a production volume decrease, we try to uh, let them know as soon as possible, also in detail, and especially when there's a, a decline in the production volume, the parts uh, delivered from suppliers would also decrease, so there is some impact. But uh, uh, we also get opinions from suppliers that uh, they don't have much loss from this. Because uh, uh, we try to reduce the cost by optimizing the quality, and also we try to deal with concerns of suppliers. And there are several thousands of proposals from suppliers. When I went to visit the, one of the suppliers the other day, what I heard from them, including many stories they share with us, for example, recently they told us that uh, uh, when Toyota makes some casual comments, for example, this component needs to be visible. If we make such a whisper or if we mumble that, then the supplier would use ink that would never disappear to clarify the location of that part. And that could be expensive. So when our engineer goes to the site, to see that ink, the engineer would say, no, no, you don't have to use this expensive ink, but you can use a marker instead. In such a way, uh, we are trying to enhance the competitiveness together. And as a result, suppliers would have less concerns. Of course, we are still in the middle, so it's never complete. But uh, we think we are trying hard to carry out these kind of activities together, but uh, uh, the fact that we are still receiving such comments from uh, outside, like this one, maybe we need to try harder. So if you could deliver such a feedback, then we will stop and rethink and try to improve ourselves further. Please continue to give us guidance. This was my answer to the first question. Mr. Konzo, regarding the second question with regards to the positions with Nippon Steel, starting with the price negotiation, as you know, and this year, price hike was in the conversation. This is not limited to Nippon Steel, but in the steel industry as a whole, there will be significant investments in carbon neutral aspects, and we are also struggling with the hike of material costs. And we honestly understand their circumstance at Nippon Steel. And on the other hand, as you may also be aware, we are in the B2C business. In other words, we deliver the complete uh, product, which is car to customers. In other words, even when there are price hikes, it is difficult for us to transfer those hikes directly into the consumers. That's the nature of our industry. So, as was explained, we have to sincerely, steadily, reduce costs one by one. In other words, with regards to price negotiation, both sides need to explain each other's circumstance and understand each other and then continue to and continue to sincerely negotiate how we can set the price. And regarding the electromagnetic steel, it is, yes, a litigation right now, but uh, there are 5.5 million people in this industry, and then we pursue to achieve carbon neutrality in the auto industry. Therefore, we have to uh, try making this effort 
steadily and sincerely. And regarding the litigation, I have to say that because this is a pending case, I have to refrain from making any further comments. That is all from myself. Thank you very much, Mr. Kondo. We'd like to move on to the next question. From NHK, Taruno-san, please. I will be switching the screen. When you see your face on the screen, please ask the question. Thank you for waiting. Mr. Taruno, please. Please unmute your mic. Excuse me, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Well, first of all, regarding the sales volume, you have reviewed the forecast. And can you explain about the factor, why we have done the review? And uh, hearing the results, it seems that it is uh, improving. But uh, your explanation was that, in substance, it is a downward revision. So you are looking at this uh, at a very uh, that it is a tough uh, result uh, forecast. So can you explain also why you're looking at it from uh, as a tough uh, forecast? I think you have one question. So this the reason and also how uh, the way of concept of this uh, reviewing of the production volume and also for the uh, in substance downward revision. Why are we having this kind of a tough uh, understanding of the forecast? Uh, the reasons is what you've asked. Yes. Uh, so Mr. Kong will respond. Thank you for your question. Regarding uh, the review of our sales volume, so you, on this slide, on the screen, you can sort of see the initial uh, first initial forecast uh, term. Uh, it was 8.7 million for the consolidated sales, which have been dropped 150,000 this time with the most uh, latest uh, forecast. And we had some opportunity to explain this uh, up to today's day, but uh, there are some situation where we had to drop our production plan volume uh, from our initial plan due to certain reasons. And I might be repeating myself, but uh, first of all, there's the, in Southeast Asia, mainly COVID-19 has had impacts, and therefore the local production plants had to be shut down, and the part supply had limitations. And also there were some impacts from semiconductor issues. Malaysia, Vietnam, there were parts uh, supply shortages. That there were some months that had uh, drop in production because of these impacts. So one, the review, a reason of this review will be impacts from those factors. And also about the downward revision that we are uh, interpreting the forecast uh, in a very tough uh, perspective. Uh, to explain that, uh, for the first half results, for example, compared with last year and two years ago, we do understand that it is a, a large increase in operating income. And again, repeating myself, this is really the, by the, because of the strong efforts by the dealers, the suppliers, and also the people working in Toyota. There were strong efforts made so that uh, they can uh, deliver the customers uh, the vehicles as much as possible, as early as possible, and all of these efforts has bared, uh, had been combined to come up with these results. However, in these results, there are some areas, so there are some reasons or factors that was a contribution from the uh, something outside of our own strengths. So we are looking at that neutrally. And for the full year forecast, it is actually in numbers a upward revision, but we focus on the areas outside of the forex event, uh, effect, and we focus on those non-forex impacts to make improvements uh, in in the uh, uh, profits as much as possible. So that is how we explain to outside as well. And when we focus on these non-forex impacts, we do see um, multiple challenges that we have to face. So as much as possible, we're going to make efforts to recover and overcome these challenges and to improve as much as possible. So that effort will continue. That will be my explanation for your question. Did I answer your question? Mr. Taruno, thank you very much. Yes, understood. Thank you. So from Wall Street Journal, 
はい。And other parts.、Uh, basically, what are you seeing on the horizon? What are, what, what are the things that、uh, you're looking out for that could possibly uh, affect uh, your recovery? はい、ショーさんありがとうございます。あの一点目は、あのこれからの残り期間、来年も含めてトヨタの回復っていうのは、あの、Your question about about the timing of our recovery in the remaining a year and also the overall industry's recovery and what are the challenges to achieve that. This is the first question, and the second question is that、uh, now semiconductors are in shortage and it is being focused. But other than semiconductors, is there any concern and any shortage? Then we would like to, you would like us to make a comment on this. Mr. Kohn is going to answer both questions. Thank you so much for your question. Starting with the first one. In the remaining period of our fiscal year, the timing for us to completely recover it is difficult to make anything certain. Of course, risk is becoming significantly smaller. However, we're not in a stage to, to say that the risk is zero. I don't think the situation allows us to say that yet. And for semiconductors, well, there are many factors, many things. Games and the other components, demand has uh, uh, the demand has a sort of stopped. So the supply and demand balance has stabilized. But on the other hand, I think the semiconductors are different from the type to type, so we have to be very cautious in looking at it. So, in December, in January, I cannot say that it will recover to the past. I cannot say that there is no risk in reducing the production. However, in comparison to the past level, even though there are some risk of production decrease,、um, It is going to recover、uh, quite a bit, and that is the situation. And as for the overall industry, I cannot say anything certain about the industry, but for the challenge, The supply of the components,、uh, if it、uh, is solved, then the OEM challenges will be solved all of a sudden. And in that sense, the energy and the material cost 
We hope that those prices would not be hiked so rapidly, and we have to also secure those materials, and that is the challenge that we are facing as industry. Other than the semiconductor, there is nothing that is critical at the moment. Due to the energy shortage, some magnesium, yes, we are hearing that there are some shortage. However, we do not think that is a critical issue at the moment, and that's not what we hear at, at the moment. Thank you, Sean San, for your question. We'd like to move on to the next question. Shiraki San from Reuters, please. We will switch the screen when your face is seen on the screen. Can we ask you to start your question? Ms. Shiraki, please. Thank you. I'm Shiraki from Reuters, and I have two questions as well. So in your consolidated sales forecast, the electrified vehicle's volume is my question. Here, also compared with the initial forecast, there has been a slight decrease, and I might be taking it in a selfish way, but here, is it purely about the sales trend impact or is it the cause of the semiconductor crunch and the material price hike? Because of such a high level of material prices now, does it mean that price pressure is more on the electrified vehicles related to the inventory management uh, issue that you said before? Maybe are you focusing on selling more of the conventional gasoline vehicles? Will that be a background to this revision? Gasoline price hikes is another trend that we're seeing in the market. And so, of course, uh, from an environmental perspective, uh, I thought that electrified vehicles will have a higher ratio, but why is it that you drop the ratio there too? And the next uh, question is about, uh, not really to the performance, but in the under Kish Mr. Kishida's administration, there is a uh, topic uh, discussed about to review the disclosure from companies of and to reduce the frequency from every quarter. And uh, from the press, uh, there are some concerns, but from the PR side, the uh, op functions inside of the company, also uh, for the investments uh, toward uh, making future investments uh, toward human resource development and other business pro plans, uh, some people say that uh, uh, quarterly and uh, disclosure will be too much frequent. So Toyota, being a global company, uh, what are your thoughts uh, regarding this quarterly disclosure? And in uh, Europe, uh, there are some uh, reviews uh, being discussed, uh, but uh, if you have any any ideas about what will be an appropriate way to review uh, the quarterly announcements, uh, can you share with us? Thank you, Shiraki-san, for your question. So first is uh, for the electrified vehicle's volume. It has been downward revised from the previous forecast, so the reasons is what you want to hear. And the second question is about the disclosure announcement of the quarterly results. Uh, there is a discussion about reviewing this frequency, and what does Toyota think about this uh, topic? Uh, so that both of it will be responded by uh, Mr. Kohn. Thank you for your questions. Starting with the electrified vehicle ratio, as you have pointed out, slightly the ratio has dropped. But there is no significant factor to this, such as a global common factor. That is not the case. For electrified vehicles and, for example, China, China is not included, not included in the consolidated sales volume, but hybrid uh, accounts for about 20% last year in China. And this year, it has increased up to around 30% electrified vehicles in China. Therefore, globally, it doesn't mean that we see a reduction in the ratio of electrified vehicles in the global market. So our understanding of this uh, change is uh, that this is not a significant change difference. Well, it's not about the ratio, but I wanted to hear about the volume, actual volume. Well, so is that the same uh, reason as well? Yes, uh, for the forecast, we first uh, see that uh, a drop of 150,000 from uh, re revised downward from our initial forecast. 
どうなんでしょうあ,のあえてですねこの電動車だけなんか引き下げてるとか。Not that we intentionally drop only the electrified vehicles, honestly speaking. So it's just that、uh, looking at when we revised the most latest、uh, sales volume forecast, we have、uh, revised uh, also in the same ratio,、uh, in the same way, the electrified vehicles. So this is not something that is just focused on electrified vehicles、uh, changes. And is, is it okay? Did I answer、uh, correctly? Was there any Uh, did I make any misleading comments? No, I'm fine. I understand now. Thank you. So, for your second question about the quarterly performance announcements, for right now, I do not fully, I'm not fully aware of what kind of discussions in detail is happening. But、uh, when I talk to investors and stakeholders, it needs to be something that、uh, will be、uh, beneficial、uh, for the stakeholders and、uh, investors. That is the way I look at the quarterly results announcements. A company as a going concern always, well, rather than every three months,、uh, we're thinking about、uh, 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future as we operate our business. I think that's a, a common way that a company、uh, operates. And in the meantime, of course, we will have to, we, it's very important to make the most appropriate and timely announcements and reports. And for key matters, for very important matters, we, don't ha- we should not wait. Three months, and we should、uh, make those kinds of reports and announcements of key matters、uh, in a timely way, an appropriate time. But if the quarterly results should be announced,、uh, We have to think about、uh, the, it will, may cause that the ups and downs as seen in every quarter may、uh, be in sync with the ups and downs of the company value. So, if it is understood in that way, probably it will not be so positive to make a quarterly report. Therefore, together with those financial disclosures, we think that it's,、uh, it's important to have media s、uh, like Toyota Times and own, own media like Toyota Times to be able to uh, disclose uh, the way of thinking. Of Toyota, the philosophy of Toyota, what's happening in Toyota.、Uh, we think、uh, we are trying to use the most of these owned media to、uh, explain about what is happening within Toyota, and I think this is quite important for us. So that will be my answer to your question. Thank you, Ms. Shiraki. We'd like to take the next question from Nikkan Kogyo Shinbun. Mr. Masatoshi, please. We are going to switch the screen. So please start your question when you see yourself on the screen. Ms. Masatoshi, please. This is Masatoshi from Nikkan Kogyo. Can you hear me? Regarding the first half results, so minus 30 billion yen for the cost reduction effort, and I think this was impacted by the material cost increase. So, together with the cost reduction benefit, can you give me the breakdown? And also, compare with the period from January to September. The raw material price, did you change your opinion and position on this? And that's the first question. And the second question is that、uh, the, this situation, under this situation,、uh, what kind of extra room do you have to gain back those benefits and what are the measures that you're going to take? Thank you very much for your question, Ms. Masatoshi. The first question was about the impact of the cost reduction and the breakdown of that. And also, your question was about the hike of the material price. And the second question was about whether or not there is any more opportunity to recover the profit. Mr. Kony is going to answer this. Thank you so much for your question. In the first half, minus 30 billion yen's breakdown. So, the so called pure cost reduction excluding the market. Is about 300 billion yen per year being the target for us. 
、えー、今回まあ半分ですので、半,半期ということになります。1500億円ぐらい。若干そこには届かなかった。And we were a little short of this target as a result of the, the pure cost reduction. まあ、逆に言うとですね、speaking, えー、それ以外の部分は、まあ、市況変動のところだったと,、えー、ということでございます。なので、1500億円弱。Little less than 100 billion yen, we were short of this target, unfortunately. This is the cost reduction benefit, and remainder is the market. In the second half, one moment, please. In the second half, compared with the first half, the impact is going to be larger. On year on year basis, the cost reduction will be minus 345 billion on page 18, that is. こちらもですね、あの大体18ページですね。The annual cost reduction is 300 billion yen, and we are also a little short of this target. In other words, and conversely speaking, remainder is the market fluctuation, but a little more than 200 is the cost reduction, and the remainder is the market impact. In other words, net net, the second half is going to be tougher, a little tougher than the first half. And our measures to strengthen our profitability, well, on this point, as much as possible, the FX fluctuation. Should be eliminated as much as possible. In other words, we would like to turn this number more positively by excluding those FX impact. That is the numerical aspect, but there is no Major measure which can turn around the number by 100 billion all of the sudden. It's in the unit of several thousands or several tens of thousands, the accumulation of small benefits. And、uh, we will continue with those. A series of small methods and also a value chain, including the supplies and used cars and connected car business software. We would like to further improve the profitability of those areas. And by doing so, we would like to improve our profitability. Uh, higher, more than 2,800. Thank you so much, Masatoshi san. It is now the scheduled time. However, we'd like to take a last question.、Um, Toyo Keizai Kigawa san, please. We'll switch the screen when you see yourself. Please start your question. Ms. Kigawa san, please, Mr. Kigawa. Can you hear me? I think your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. I have a question about the, your future plan about how you promote electrification. 2030, a 200 gigawatt plant operation capacity is what you explained it to secure. And BZ4X was what you have announced. And 2025, you're going to have. Have a North American plant established and make an investment by Toyota alone. And in the meantime, what happens、uh, in the world is uh, electrification uh, uh, momentum is strong,、uh, gain, uh, becoming stronger. And also, you need a lot of、uh, investment. You need to have efficiency in your investments. But、uh, once again, how are you going to、uh, be taking initiatives、uh, toward electrification promotion? Thank you, Mr. Kigawa, for your question. This question myself, Nagata, would respond to. Regarding electrification, we receive a lot of questions and we have repeatedly responded that basically it is about how we are going to reduce CO2 as quickly as possible. 
Starting now, and what Toyota has been saying is that regarding electrification, we are going to become a department store of electrified vehicles, which in me, which in other words means that we're going to have a full lineup of electrified vehicles so that we can deliver it to various regions and markets, customers all around the world, and have our customers choose what they want to use. That's what we have been saying as our approach. And for each region, especially the energy, energy situation, uh, that will be supplied there and also the fuel situation is completely different. Therefore, in Europe, uh, there's a lot of renewables, so battery EVs uh, will be good, but in other regions, there should be other options that will be most appropriate for them and to have the consumers, users uh, select it. So this has always been our approach. And for what you have mentioned, Mr. Kigawa, regarding battery EVs, we also I think that for both quantity and cost, uh, if the renewable energy uh, is reduced uh, further in terms of uh, cost and have more uh, secure, uh, have uh, more supply, then it, uh, the battery EVs will be a, a very good uh, potential uh, CO2 re uh, reduction vehicle, a very good uh, uh, solution. And if, as you have mentioned, the batteries, uh, uh, Toyota is going to make 1.5 trillion yen investments to build that foundation for supply, and also uh, we're in United America, we're going to make until 2030 the battery plants, uh, making investments of 380 billion. And uh, for until 2025, the battery EV investments and lineup, uh, we have uh, committed to 15 models uh, to, to be prepared uh, in that timing. And then uh, we have the BZ4X, uh, the battery EV, uh, battery elect, uh, EV specified lineup we have announced. So batteries and battery EVs, both of it, to other, it doesn't, for, compared with other OEMs, I don't think uh, we are inferior. I think uh, we ha are preparing ourselves to be competitive uh, in the competition with other OEMs regarding batteries and battery EVs. So we will be steadily promoting this approach and plan. However, up to now, uh, we have been saying many things, but at, at the end, battery EVs, you need to have the clean energy energy as the base. If you have clean energy as the premise, then as a precondition, then it will be very effective. But unfortunately, in Japan, with our energy situation, uh, rather than battery EVs, the plug-in hybrids and the other electrified vehicles meets our conditions. It will reduce the CO2 uh, emissions of, in Japan, and also it will be also uh, easy to buy uh, as a pr product. And then that will also contribute to reducing the CO2 emissions uh, in this region. So this is also uh, what we have been saying. And also, in order to promote electrification, having the options, a wide variety of options of electrification is what we want to do. And that means the full lineup of electrified vehicles in Toyota terms. So in order to prepare this full lineup, we will be working on various technical innovations so that the Japan's 5.5 million employment related to this industry can be protected. This is another message that we have been uh, saying. But very unfortunately, so we are going to do a lot of electrified vehicle projects uh, but what is happening uh, now uh, will be a question that we have been asked. And unfortunately, uh, some people are saying that uh, uh, Toyota is a promoter of hybrids and is against the promoting uh, battery EVs. Unfortunately, uh, that is uh, how we are talked about. But so I'm feeling a struggle of uh, it's, it's very difficult to communicate uh, what we're trying to do. So that is also a fact, uh, feeling that our message is not really conveyed. And so how we have to, uh, how we communicate this, how we can receive the understanding that Toyota is very serious in promoting the battery EVs. This is something that we still have to consider and plan, and that is a, a struggle that uh, I have right now uh, regarding how to communicate. So I very much appreciate uh, the advice and comments from uh, the media, too, so that we can think about how uh, we will be able to better uh, communicate. I'm sorry, I received, I'm giving you back a question, uh, receiving a question, but I hope that we can work together uh, in that communication side. Well, then and about the battery EVs, uh, how you uh, explained that, especially the communication to consumers, uh, you, you said a little earlier that uh, it, you are uh, in well position to compete with the other OEMs. And probably the way that you express this should be changed. I think I need your advice on that. Well, we always talk about we're, uh, we're going to uh, show uh, maybe it's better to have a more uh, com uh, concrete lineup of battery EVs more clearly and show it to uh, the press and to the com uh, consumer. But we'll now be uh, putting our heads together to think uh, strongly 